Forms in React come with a lot of boilerplate code. We have to grab the form data, send them to the server, update the state to show success or error messages, and keep track of whether the request is pending. The new use action state React hook lets us reduce all this boilerplate code to a single line, and I'll show you how. Let's start with the form without server actions, etc. We have a text area field, and when we click the submit button, the unsubmit handler is invoked, we grab the form data, start a transition to make sure the UI is still responsive, and also we get the is pending flag that we use to disable the button whilst the form is being submitted. We then send the data over to the server using fetch, update the state to display a success message or error message, and finally call route to refresh to refetch the posts. On the server, we have our route handler where we grab the form data, pass them to create post function where we do some basic validation, save the post to our JSON quote unquote database, and yes, normally you would use something like Prisma or Drizzle, and then we return an object indicating if it's a success or not, and send a message along, which we then send back as JSON in our route handler. And to be honest with you, I think this code is perfectly okay. If it was a production application, I would probably want to validate the API response using something like Zod to ensure type safety and add better error handling in case the fetch call fails. But apart from that, there aren't any problems per se. What you'll notice though, is that the code is kind of boilerplate heavy and requires going through a lot of different layers. First, the onSubmit function is invoked, where we have to create the form data, send them to the server using fetch. The request first hits the route handler on our server, where we invoke the createPost function, and then we have to propagate the result of the createPost call through our route handler and fetch call all the way back to the component state. So let's try to eliminate as many of these layers as possible until we get to something like this with the use action state. First, we can leverage the action property on a form element. In native HTML, this specifies the URL where the browser will submit the data to. But since React 19, React extends this property and lets you pass a function to it, which accepts the form data. What it means for our code is that we can change the onSubmit to action, rename the onSubmit function to form handler, we now get the form data directly as an argument, and we can remove the prevent default call. And we can see that the form still works just fine. Going back to our diagram, on submit becomes form handler, and we can remove the form data creation layer as we now get it directly as an argument. The next step is eliminating our fetch calls and route handlers. Instead of using fetch to make API calls, we can add a use server directive above our create post function, which will turn it into a server action. We can then import it in our React component and call it directly. This will also ensure type safety as you get fully typed return values, because from TypeScript perspective, we are calling a regular function. Also, we can remove route to refresh and use regular date path in our server action instead, which will achieve the same result. And if we try creating a new post, we can open our network tab, and when we press the create post button, we can see that it's still a fetch request, but it's abstracted away. Looking at our diagram, we've now eliminated the fetch and the route handler, but we still have to manually call use state to synchronize what we get from the server with the client component state. And yes, that's where use action state comes into play. Use action state allows us to automatically assign whatever we get back from the action that we pass to it. In our case, it will be the create post function into client side states. Let me show you how. So let's introduce the use action state hook and see what it can do for us. And let's ignore the red squiggly lines for the time being. We'll address all of those, of course. The use action state hook access a function in our case, it will be the create post server action and an initial state. In our case, null. No. What we get back is form state, 
which is whatever gets returned after we call the create post function. And if we haven't called it yet, it will be the initial state. And this means that we can get rid of our used state. Next, we get back a form action, which is a function that is meant to be passed to our form element as action prop. And this means that we can get rid of our form handler. And finally, we get a is pending flag, which indicates if there is a pending transition. And this means we can also get rid of how we use transition hook. And there's one more red squiggly line to address, which is create post. And the adjustment that we need to make is that we need to pass a previous state as a first argument to our create post function, which is what React expects. Personally, I haven't found a good river use case for the pref state argument, but in theory, it lets us do something like this. So if the previous message was please keep it clean will you, it should give us a different error message the second time around. Let's give it a shot. So let's submit a swear word for the first time. And the second time around, we get told, I told you to keep it clean. And finally, going back to our diagram, we've eliminated the use state layer. So now our diagram looks like this, which is what we wanted to achieve at the beginning. And it means that the client state gets automatically synced with what we get back from our server action.